Thank you, Joe. All right, you know my my leading sentence. What's up, Patriots? <laughs> Thank you. It is an honor for me to be here, and I thank you so much for this opportunity. Uh, a lot of faces in the crowd are very familiar, and I really appreciate your support. Uh, this is my first official book signing. Yeah. So this is all your fault. <laughs> now, I got a question. Which table has the most books? Maybe you could get some points. Right? Let me see. Hold them up. All right. Make sure you count. See? I'm trying to help you out. <laughs> We have five. We have five. Well, this is great. And uh, my friend Kenny is in the back. He has a lot of books back there available, so please see him. They would make great Father's Day, Mother's Day, birthday gifts, and graduation. So, just to give you an idea of my busy schedule and Tom's busy schedule, my husband, he's in the back because we are in the fight for liberty on a daily basis. Um, our schedule for the month of April alone, Florida, North Carolina, Kentucky, Ohio, Indiana, Tea Party rallies and book signings. Yes. And it's shareholder season. We take on the CEOs. They only show their you-know-what once a year, and they hate it. They hate it because we get to challenge them on the decisions that they make that are not in the best interest of shareholders or the country. Just last week, uh, last month, excuse me, we were in California at the Apple shareholder meeting, and we were challenging them on their conflict of interest because Al Gore, is one of their board members. And Apple was in support of cap and trade, tax on energy. Yesterday, we were in Chicago. Sometimes I don't know where I am when I wake up. <laughs> we were in Chicago. We were challenging the CEO of Exelon, another energy company, uh, their CEO, because of their support for cap and trade and crony capitalism. We have to get in their face, my friends, so please, Keep that in mind. If you are a shareholder, if there's a local corporation that is not making decisions that are in the best interest of our country, our shareholders, our consumers, go to the meetings, take your shares with you, and raise the question. Demand an answer. That's what Tom and I do. We're going to GE in a few weeks. Oh, yeah. In Detroit. And we're going to Duke Energy in North Carolina. Well, my friends, my book is very timely because I am challenging the liberal black establishment. And I am starting at the top. President Obama. He has written extensively throughout my book. I am challenging President Obama and his lousy record. <laughs> Obamacare, his deplorable energy policy, the Trayvon Martin case in Florida, why did this man insert himself into that situation? He is helping the liberal black establishment fan the flames of racism. And I am challenging these people. And I am sure they know about me, and that's good. <laughs> Jesse Jackson, Al Sharpton, they're opportunists. Well, their day has come. Obama is doing all he can to fundamentally transform America. But my friends, it is up to we, the people, to hold the line and say no, not on our watch. I'm doing my part. I'm on the radio anytime from 6 o'clock in the morning to 11, 12 o'clock at night because the radio is podcast. 
uh, satellite, it's on the West Coast, all hours of the day. Both my husband and I are on the radio fighting for liberty. We're on TV all the time fighting for liberty, writing commentaries and press releases fighting for liberty. And I wrote Blacklash, how Obama and the left are driving Americans to the government plantation as part of my role to fight for liberty. And as I said last time when I was here, if our military personnel can put their lives on the line every day to keep us free, the least I can do is run my mouth for liberty. Mm -hmm. And I thank all of our military personnel who are here with us today. And thank you for your families and their sacrifice. I'm playing my role, my friends. Please continue to play your role because we all have a role to play to rein in this government gone wild. And I thank you.